Well, everyone, having just heard Mark chapter 6 being read to us, we can see it's not a happy story. In fact, there's nothing happy about it at all, really, if you look at it. But uh, I want to just share a few thoughts with you, boys and girls and grown-ups. And boys and girls, this is a little bit complex and complicated, but uh, hang on in there if you can. First of all, some questions for you, boys and girls. I want you to help me, OK, because I'm not very good with relationships and family things. But you help me. First of all, first question, what do you call the person who gave birth to you? Good. Second, if she had another son, he would be your... Excellent. If he grew up and got married, his wife would be your... Well... And finally, a more complex one here. If she had a daughter, her daughter would be your... Don't ask me, I'm confused already. But there we are. This is talking about the Herod family. They were so complicated in their relationships. Oh, let me explain. Herodias, I'm going to call her Queen Herod, OK? Queen Herod hated John the Baptist. Now, I need to explain why she hated him. And it is rather complicated. Herod the Great, OK, had seven sons. He had lots of wives, but seven sons. One son, Herod Philip, married Queen Herod, who we just mentioned, who was his niece, and they gave birth to Salami. Sorry, Salome, OK? Another son, Herod Antipas, ran off with his brother's wife, Queen Herod, and she was also Herod Antipas's niece as well as his sister-in-law. Keeping up? Salome became his stepdaughter. Very confusing, isn't it? By marrying Queen Herod, Herod Antipas had broken the Jewish law in Leviticus 18 and Leviticus 20 and outraged the laws of decency and morality. And John kept reminding both Herod and Queen Herod of this fact. And that's why Queen Herod hated John the Baptist so much. And it just goes to show us how far an embittered person is willing to go. Herod Agrippa was slightly different. He was not mixed. He both feared John and actually respected him as well. Yet in our reading, we find him drunk, having organised a very sleazy lad's do to celebrate his birthday. He was very impressed by his stepdaughter's erotic dancing, and he offered her anything she wanted. She immediately ran over to her mum and said, Mum, what shall I ask for? What shall I ask for? And the mum said, the head of John the Baptist. Very, very sad. And then Herod, of course, regretted that he'd actually made this this promise, but he felt he had to keep it because all the people there were watching and expected him to do so. Let's finish on John the Baptist and a bit of good news, shall we? Because John the Baptist was a lovely, amazing guy, a man of courage. We know John was a child of the desert. Yeah, here we see he's locked up in a dungeon, a sleep dark dungeon overlooking the Dead Sea. And it must have been a very difficult place for him to actually exist in there. But John both lived and died for truth. His calling was to bring the voice of God to people. And in many ways, you know, he acted as people's consciences. He was to bring God's message and introduce people to Jesus, just like you and I have been called to do today. We must ask ourselves, did John fully understand what he was saying? And do we understand when we say it? that Jesus must increase and we must decrease. They literally mean that all our own will, our desires, our ambitions, our hopes, etc. must dissolve so that Jesus can take over. It means all selfishness must be abandoned. To decrease before God means to walk humbly before our God. Humility is a way of giving up everything that is not of God and allowing God to shine through us. For John, it ultimately led, ultimately led to his imprisonment, ending, as we just read, in his death. For us, it means putting God first in everything in our lives. And we will need the Lord's help to actually do this, won't we? Finally, Jesus' words in Matthew 16, verse 24, come to mind, whoever wants to be my disciple, must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me, says the Lord Jesus. And for all us believers, this was our choice, the choice we made when we committed ourselves to following the Lord Jesus. Now listen, Jesus loves us. We can't do it by ourselves. We need his help, but because he loves us, 
is going to help us. And boys and girls, because we know he loves us, I want you to come forward now because we've got some actions to do. As we sing together, I know Jesus loves me. Are you ready? Come on in, out you come.